So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about NFT Worlds, one of the biggest land opportunities within the metaverse. Right now, it's currently trading at 11.55 ETH. There's about 35,000 Ethereum volume, so a very healthy volume. And there's about 10,000 of these only spread it across 4.6 thousand owners. Now, NFT land has been exploding. If we take a look at their chart right over here, they went and hit all the way up until the 15, 16, 18 ETH. So it really exploded in the past past couple of weeks now nft lands dropped a while back they actually dropped back in last october it was actually a free mint so that's incredible to know so they were quietly building while the market was going up and down you know you had your bitcoin runs and then your major dump but nft world was building in the background now this project caught my attention in january i was kind of watching it seeing it go up and then come down again i didn't really pay that much attention but it kept on coming up over and over and over again so i went and i did a deep dive into this project so in today's video i'm going to be talking about all the key features about nft world and why i think this is going to set up to be one of the biggest land plays within the metaverse so hey guys this is colin at the value thinker welcome back so if you're new to my channel what i normally do is cover nfts cryptocurrency and metaverse gaming so before I get started into this deep dive, just a quick disclaimer. So full disclosure, I'm not a financial advisor, so please don't take financial advice from me. Make sure that you do your own due diligence and thorough research before you get into any project. The crypto and NFT space is incredibly volatile, so make sure you understand that before you consider investing in any project. So with that out of the way, let's talk about why NFT Worlds is positioned as one of the best land opportunities within the metaverse. We're gonna break this down into two parts. The first part are the numbers. Look at NFT world itself, compare it to its competitors, look at the tokenomics, its position, its roadmap, and where it is going. And then number two, we're gonna look at the market and user adoption, functionality, and growth of NFT world. So once we get through all the details, I'm going to give you my thoughts and prediction on where NFT Worlds is heading. So first off, what is NFT World? Well, NFT World is land for the metaverse. Kind of like the sandbox and Decentraland where you can buy land, build out and customize that land for the experience that you desire. Now, NFT Worlds is much different and I'm going to go into the details why. First thing is that they have 10,000 plots of land. So tied to each NFT is a unique plot of land that you can build on and customize your experience for that user base. There's 4,600 owners like we talked about trading at 11.55 and there's about 35,000 volume of Ethereum traded so a very healthy volume. So right away one of the major differences is that NFT Worlds is the most compatible and flexible metaverse platform. So what I mean by that is that NFT Worlds compared to Decentraland and the Sandbox, their two main competitors, is that it's playable on console. So that's a huge difference. You're talking about Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch. Those are the three biggest consoles out there right now. And NFT World will be available to play on these consoles, whereas Decentraland and the Sandbox is not. That's a key differentiator right there for me, because all the traditional gamers and the huge gaming community sits on these consoles. It's also available on smartphones and tablets, so Android, iOS, and it's also playable on web-based platform as well. Just like the other two, but it's even more flexible. So the second major reason is that it uses Minecraft as its base layer and builds on top of it. So NFT Worlds is not trying to reinvent the wheel, but is already using a very powerful existing platform that is all open source. For those of you who don't know about Minecraft, I'm going to talk about it in detail later on. But basically, Minecraft is one of the biggest games out there. It's already sold more than 238 million copies worldwide, and there's about 140 million monthly active users. Now, when you compare this gaming user base compared to crypto gaming, it's like night and day. Now let's first talk about the competitors, Decentraland, Mana, and the Sandbox Sand right over here. So as of today's date, Decentraland is trading at 280 with a market cap of $5 billion. And then the Sandbox is at 316 with a market cap of $3.5 billion. If you jump into each one of them individually, so let's take a look at Mana right over here. So Mana at one point, if we pull back and we go back to year to date, and then we look at market cap, sorry, if we look at all, and we look at market cap you can see that it actually hit at its peak right over here 
10 billion dollars on november the 24th of 2021 when the market was running really hard and then i go to sandbox and i take a look at the same data right over here we're going to go to all time market cap around that period november so right over here it actually hit 7.5 billion dollars now these are huge market caps that these metaverse lands have been able to hit going back to today's number right over here 5 billion and 3.5 billion and we look at the market cap of nft worlds compared to the sandbox the sandbox is about 44.5 times larger than world and if we do the same thing with mana so decentraland decentraland is about 52 times the market cap of nft worlds as of today's price so are these market caps justifiable? Now let's take a look at the numbers and see the growth potential for NFT worlds compared to these two competitors. First off, I want to point out the scarcity. So NFT worlds only has 10,000 NFTs metaverse plots of land. So compared to the sandbox, which holds 162,000 plots of land, and then Mana, Decentraland, which has 97,000 plots of land. So right away, we can see that in terms of demand and supply, it's much more scarce compared to its two competitors. Now, the next thing I want to point out is the user base to valuation argument for Decentraland and the Sandbox versus NFT Worlds. Now, a lot of people keep on talking about how there's so many users on Decentraland and the Sandbox and they're acquiring users all the time. But when you do a deeper dive into the numbers in terms of monthly active users, if you take a look right over here, Decentraland only has about 300,000 and the Sandbox only has about 30,000. And at its peak CCU right over here, okay, Okay. Decentraland only has 2,500 users on at the same time. So that's its concurrency. That's not a lot of players for the valuation that they're clocking in. And the sandbox is actually unknown. Now this number 30,000 is probably a little bit larger now that they've come out with their alpha. And then when you look at these valuations, even though these numbers are older, Decentraland and the sandbox right over here, you can see that it almost does not make any sense when you compare it to traditional gaming. Now, what I mean by that is I want you to focus on Minecraft because we're going to talk about how NFT Worlds is using Minecraft as a base layer to build their NFT Worlds on top of. Now, Minecraft has about 140 million active users, monthly active users, and total user base of 200 million. 140 million means it's a roughly 466 times larger than Decentraland and about 4,666 six times larger than the sandbox okay so when you compare that to roblox where it's market cap and valuation very similar user base to minecraft it's worth about 45 billion dollars and then you look back at decentraland at 7.3 so it's about six times the multiple but in terms of user base it's more than almost 500 times the user base as decentraland so in terms of the valuation it makes no sense but to put this number into perspective so each of those monthly users on the sandbox would be valued at 472,000 and then on Decentraland at about $24,000. When you compare that to Roblox, which is only $227 per user, that is really expensive, right? When you take a look right over here at the sandbox and Decentraland, it is way overvalued for what they're hitting right now. And this is exactly what Tech Times pointed out, that the valuation per monthly active user was way too expensive on the sandbox at 472000 Decentraland at 24000 and then Roblox in terms of user base is only $227. So next thing I want to talk about is the tokenomics for NFT worlds. It's the world token right over here. So max distribution is about 5 billion world token. So the first thing I want to point out is that 50% of all of the supply is going to be given out as play to earn rewards. So any player who plays a game that's built on NFT worlds is going to have a chance to earn the world token. And this is going to be distributed over a timeline of five years. Now, this is great for NFT worlds because the world token is going to be adopted by numerous projects who can then redistribute it towards their players, allowing for the token to have a high utilization and adoption. And it's going to make it extremely hard to fork this token because it's now used across many projects. Now, 10% of it will go towards airdrops for NFT world landowners. So the snapshot was taken in December. That was the first airdrop. And the second one is in late February. Staking rewards 35%. So this is distributed to owners who stake their NFT worlds, again, over a targeted timeline of five years. So if you add up all these tokens, I think that it's extremely fair because this is 50%, 85, 95. So that really only leaves the team with 5%. 
I think this is one of the most fair and equitable tokenomics, and the team is only reserving 5% for in-game promotions, partnerships, growth, so they're really looking at growing this project for the long term. And like I said earlier, NFT Worlds was actually minted for free. Now, you can't get more fair than this. If you go back to October the 5th, you had to pay zero ETH, just gas, okay? So as you can see, this is one of the most fair and community-driven projects that have been working and grinding all throughout this cycle. So on Twitter, NFT World has over 80,000 followers. They have a very engaged and lively community on their Discord. They have about 60,000 followers and they're constantly communicating with the community, allowing the community to have that feedback. And you can also see the projects that are being built on NFT Worlds are incredible. They look like they're out of this world. And you can see right over here, the project that Creepy Creams is building looks incredible. Just the attention to detail and the world that they're building out. So now that we've dived into the numbers, looked at the valuation of NFT Worlds compared to its peers, the tokenomics, its position, and where it's going, let's take a look at the market and user adoption, the functionality and the growth that NFT World has. So when comparing user adoption of NFT Worlds to its competitor, Decentraland and the Sandbox, we got to go back to this chart. Remember the NFT Worlds makes use of Minecraft as its base layer. So what that does is gives it a huge advantage over its competitors because now it's playable on consoles. So people can play it on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and it's also playable on a web base and also on smartphones as well. Whereas the other two, Decentraland right over here, that's not available on consoles right now. It's not available on smartphones same thing with the sandbox and on the sandbox you can see that it's only available on windows so right away in terms of adoption nft world stands out significantly right away now let's jump into minecraft so for those of you who do not know minecraft is one of the biggest games out there it's got one of the largest user base with over 238 million copies sold there's about 140 million active users on Minecraft every day and it is open source so that means that anybody can build on Minecraft developers it's got one of the biggest mods so lots of modifications and users can come in and build out the world like how they want it to be now another interesting stat that I saw was that Minecraft actually has 400 million registered user in mainland China and it continues to add to its system. Now I found this post dating all the way back to 2020 on Twitter right over here so I do expect its user base to continue to grow. Now outside of this large user base, the adoption to NFT world would be much easier because if you look at the sandbox, it doesn't even have a browser or console. You need to download it on its own client, whereas Decentraland does have a browser, but certainly no console or mobile. So the learning curve behind Decentraland and the sandbox is going to be much more steep. And besides that, the traditional gamers coming to crypto will have to learn about Web3, so wallets like MetaMask how to buy the tokens, how to transfer the tokens in. So you can see that the adoption to the sandbox and Decentraland is going to be a lot harder. Whereas NFT Worlds, they already have an existing user base that understands the game, a lot of builders who can build on top of the game, so development will be a lot easier. So the next thing I did was I actually looked at which projects purchased NFT World. So the first one is Artifact Labs, aka Nike. So if we take a look on OpenSea at NFT World 6349, it's owned by Artifact Lab, which is owned by Nike. They purchased it around February the 14th, right over here, 14 days ago, for 6.67 Ethereum. So we do see big projects coming in and purchasing NFT Worlds. So other prominent projects like Doge Pound right over here who purchased NFT Worlds. There's many other projects who are looking at, who have already purchased in, and who are building. Like Jungle Freaks is also building a play-to-earn game on NFT Worlds as well. Now, if we take a look at the size comparison in terms of what you're getting for the Metaverse Worlds, a single plot of NFT World land is actually bigger than all of the central land and bigger than the entire sandbox when compared to a single plot of land. So it's shown graphically over here so that we can appreciate that size different. So I do think that you'll be able to build a much larger experience for your user base and a more rich experience on NFT World. Now, besides all of the data that we talked about, let's talk about one major risk of this project. I'm taking you back to an article 
back in 2014. So this is about eight years ago. Microsoft acquired Minecraft at that time for $2.5 billion. So Microsoft does have all of the rights to Minecraft. And right now, NFT Worlds really doesn't have that blessing from Microsoft yet. So there is a risk that Microsoft comes in and shuts down this whole operation. But so far, we haven't seen that yet. So there's two scenarios that may happen. Number one is that Microsoft comes in and shuts down NFT World. Now, NFT World's developers and founders have came out and said that they are in talks with Microsoft. So in their Discord, you can see right over here, somebody posted the team has the green light from Microsoft. And then they responded. So here are the founders of NFT World. It says, not the green light, but they're watching us. And they would prefer us to do this rather than somebody else that wouldn't play by the rules. And then the team also followed up with this. It says, we are in contact with Microsoft's IP department and we regularly chat. So I think that the team's upfront about this. They wouldn't be lying about this in the open given how large scale this project is. So I will give them the benefit of the doubt and we'll see where things go. So the other scenario is that Microsoft is actually sitting back watching this, watching NFT World build out this entire metaverse coming in and just acquiring them, just like the way they acquired Activision Blizzard in order for them to enter the metaverse. So NFT Worlds makes a lot more sense because here it is a world that's already all built out based on the code that your developers already know and your team has been working with. So just my final thoughts on NFT World. Given the financial metrics, the number, the valuation compared to its peers and competitors, I think that it is way ahead and it's got a lot of room for growth. So in terms of market and user adoption, I do think that it's much easier for traditional gamers to migrate over to NFT worlds rather than its competitors. So for all these reasons, I do think that this is a project to watch out for. So personally, I'm going to be looking for an entry point into NFT worlds because this is land that you're going to hold for the long term. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope that you enjoyed the content, learned something useful, and I will see you next time. So thanks for stopping by. And as usual, I hope that you got some value out of this content. I'll continue to deliver content like this. So if you like it, give me a like, a thumbs up, and a follow, and I'll see you in the next video.